I don't want to look like a, a, a heavily laden pro. I, my ideal is to look look like an amateur. For a travel photographer, that's a that's a good thing because you know we're 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 dropped behind the lines of foreign cultures and we're made to tell stories about those cultures and bring them back home. And so a smaller camera has been a part of my uh, kit since the very beginning. The less ob obtrusive I can be. Uh, the better my pictures are. I don't like to tie them up forever. Uh, I feel like uh, the best communication comes early on. We, we make that connection, I make my shots, and I'm out of there. So being able to work quickly and efficiently uh, is, is a, a, an important part of the way I work. Yeah, you know, talking about favorite images is hard. It's like trying to pick your favorite child. You know, you love them all kind of thing. But, uh, but the images that that I, that I treasure are the ones that I've worked hardest to overcome whatever those barriers are. The picture of the, the men bathing in what's called the Blue Lagoon um, was the runoff pond from a geothermal energy plant. I can remember the camera, and it was my, my FM2 and a 24F2, and I got in the water and I got closer and closer to these guys, and I made this environmental portrait of them with this, with this space station looking thing in the back and the water, and it was just a, a very, very bizarre and very unique um, uh, image. If I were able to take this picture um, uh, today with today's technology, with the DF, I would have been able to uh, ascertain that I had the right exposure and the right look uh, without running through two or three rolls of film and I would have been able to do the job faster and get out of there a little faster, I think. The tradition of different film stocks for different looks does translate into the uh, digital world because I discovered uh, Nikon's picture controls a couple of years ago. For many years in the beginning, I was shooting only RAW and making all my own JPEGs. And then I started shooting RAW plus JPEG. And when I noticed that I could actually fine tune the look of the JPEG that came out of the camera, I started thinking of these different uh, picture controls as different film stocks. So by thinking in terms of, of film stocks, um, uh, I think it does translate over into the uh, digital world, especially with those picture controls. A great camera is one that's almost transparent in its use. It has to be light, it has to be simple. It has to let me do everything I need to do, but not bog me down with a lot of bells and whistles that I personally don't need. I don't think this camera forced me to change much of the way I was working at all. I could glance down, see my my shutter and all that kind of stuff, and, and, and I was, it was like the film days, so I was more in the moment, I felt. Uh, I think it, it helped me work more in the moment, but I don't think it slowed me down in the least. In fact, I think it made me a little more streamlined. I had one day with the DF, I was overseas, I came back, the, the prototype was there, so, I'd, so I had to shoot in my backyard. Um, and my backyard is in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I went out and sought out some people situations, and um, one of the people I sought out was my buddy Jeff Klein, who's a, a pretty well-known uh, blues musician down in the Philadelphia area, and uh, he's got a wild old shop that's been in his family since his great-grandfather, an old guitar shop. But I felt with the DF that, man, I was right up to speed after an hour. So the DF feels like it has that film uh, camera feel to me, and and everything just falls uh, uh, under the right fingers, and and it just felt immediately comfortable. I did not have that much time to to learn my way around this camera, and it just it just felt comfortable, like a like a a, a nicely broken in hiking boot. You know, I, I knew exactly where I was and and what I needed to do, and it was so refreshing to look down and see those shutter speeds and stuff like that. It was like. Wow, you know, this is what I remember from the old days. And yet, you know, as I say, the results were uh, totally uh, uh, modern and, and contemporary and, and fantastic. For me, uh, a perfect image has to have three elements. It has to have great composition, it has to have great light, and it has to have a sense of moment. When those three elements come together, there's a communication. There's, you know, we're slicing off a minute of time or a fraction of time and we're, we're holding it up to show. And when those three elements all come together in a single frame, that for me is the perfect image.